Welcome back into another episode of Rip and Rock, episode seven. I'm actually rocking this one solo, just dealing with Rip today, guys. I know, and I'm sorry, and I apologize. It's just me. We got no Rocco today, but he will be back. Sometimes things happen, things come up, but the show goes on, right? Isn't it the Wolf of Wall Street? I think if I remember correctly, the show goes on. Well, the show's going on today, and Rocco's making me do the rundown because he's not here. Uh, But also, side note to everyone, I hope you wish Rocco a happy 30th birthday. He turned 30 this week. and honestly it's a it's a big milestone um and i'm excited to see what he's going to do in his next chapter of his life and i'm right behind him mine's actually in a month gosh just over a month now i will be joining the 30 club Uh, a little terrified so people have suggestions of what to expect let me know but but in all seriousness i'm excited this to, to see what uh Rocco does moving forward because it's been an absolute blast to work with him. But don't tell him I'm being this nice to him on air because he probably won't listen to this episode. I'm hoping he's not. But if he is, he can hear the couple good things I'm saying about him. He works hard. He's been a pleasure to be around. And he's honestly made me better and helping me get into this broadcasting world. And and I can't thank, thank him enough for that. Um, okay, enough of being nice to Rocco. Let's talk about some Orioles, though, shall we? And just to give a little bit of the rundown, then, we're doing the weekend review. We're recapping this Cubs series, which had everyone all feeling all types of way on social media. But we got to look back at the Jays series in Baltimore, where the O's wrapped up another series win. Then we're going to look at the continued brilliance of picked up players. And I'm talking about like Ryan O'Hearn and Aaron Hicks. And then after that, we're going to take a trip down to the farm. And things have been heating up for a lot of Oriole players. And and honestly, I want to explain a little bit about the situation there because that also is a heated topic of discussion is some of these Orioles prospects that are just waiting for their chance to be in Baltimore. And we'll discuss a little bit on some other players as well that might not be as talked about. And then we'll talk about Rip's tips and Rip's tips for this week is on perspective, perspective on on how to overlook or how to look at things. Uh, so yeah, I'll take that for what it's worth. Stay tuned. And then we're wrapping it up with a little bit of previewing the massive showdown with the Tampa Bay Rays in Tampa or St. Petersburg because the Rays are, don't even play in Tampa, by the way, for those that didn't know that. And then uh, they come back to Baltimore to play the Seattle Mariners. So previewing this week's games. But before we get into all of that, actually, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day and to all the fathers and father figures out there. You know, I try to tell people, you know, the mothers are always the backbones of, of the family and cannot say nothing about the mothers. But I do want to give the shout out to the dads out there and the father figures that just make such a lasting impact on their children. And, and truly, it, it, it sometimes is felt like it maybe doesn't get all the attention that that they deserve but but it's, it doesn't go unnoticed the sacrifice the willingness the time and effort that you put in to help your children in this case for me helping you know helping your son um those are things that i think people really do appreciate so i just want to give a shout out there uh because Without those people in our lives, you know, those are what set up the next foundation for the next generation, if that makes sense. So shout out to all the fathers out there. But let's get talking about baseball here. Let's get to all about a little bit of baseball. The week in review. This Cubs series was not ideal. And if you're on social media, you might have thought that the world might be ending as the Cubs take two or three from Baltimore, the Orioles drop a tough game too, which there was some horrific umpiring. And that can just be, we can leave it at that. There was calls missed on both sides, including the last inning in the top of the ninth, where the umpire did not know the balls and strikes, nor did Hayes at that moment. But, you know, Hayes just wanted to hit a dinger. So he was just locked in. 
And anyway, just horrific, just bad taste in everyone's mouth. But the team on Sunday, down again, down again in the fourth inning, down three to two, come back, storm back, win the game six to three. Santander, big day from him. Aaron Hicks, Ryan O'Hearn making their their presence known. And uh, Adley Rutschman getting the big insurance run there in the ninth inning. And then Cano and Batista on the back end, just dynamite like they've been all season long. And the Orioles get out of Chicago once again, not being swept. And I want to repeat that, not being swept. And I'm going to get some shirts, and I've said this a lot. The motto, win series, don't get swept. If you can do those two things, if you can't win the series and you don't, if you can't win the series, but you don't get swept, it makes all the difference in the world. And that's a reason why the Orioles are one of the best teams in baseball. Honestly, if it wasn't for the Rays' absurd, insane home record, which they've won 82% of their games. So just keep that in mind. They're 31 and seven at home. If they were not winning at that clip, the Orioles would be right there neck and neck. And and that's just a crazy thought to have because the Orioles are the second best team in all of the American League and are right there on the cusp behind the Atlanta Braves, who are the second team and the best team in all of baseball. So it's 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 been an up and down last few series. And I know I've heard people talk about, well, the Orioles aren't winning enough series. Well. The Orioles won on the road trip previously with the Giants and Brewers and split that road trip three and three. Then you come home and you win five of six. And so that's something to keep in mind as you can't be as effective on the road as they've been all season. And they've done a great job on the road this year as they are one of the best in baseball. They're 22 and 14. And again, that's a great clip to be at. But can that be sustainable? We'll find out. But if it's not, or they can just be. Right around 500 there, that's a win. But if they continue doing what they're doing, they're going to stay well, well above 500. But in this series finale, a lot of credit to Dean Kramer again, by the way. Shout out, Dean, because I know he's thinking to himself, holy shirts and pants, how am I giving up another home run in the first inning? Like It's, it's truly mind-boggling. Like It's truly unbelievable to think how many times it felt like Dean has given up a home run, but the beauty with Dean and a lot of these Orioles pitchers is that they do not give in when things go wrong. And and what I mean by that is, yes, I know Dean gave up a couple other runs, but they weren't earned. Dean gave you five innings of three hit baseball with one earned run and seven punchies. And how about this from the bullpen, by the way, a bullpen that people were worried a little bit about. The bullpen then goes four innings, gives up zero hits and zero walks. Yes, I know Bauman hit a couple guys, but zero hits, zero walks, and the Orioles come back and win yet another game. It's moments like that that has made this team successful so far. And even though it's not what fans want, no one wants to go and lose a series to a team they feel that they're better than. But I will say this, the Cubs are playing better ball. It wasn't that they are one of the worst teams like the Royals, or it's not like the Oakland A's, who I guess, you know, hey, stop traffic. The A's have won five of the last 10. You know, they're 19 and 55 right on the cusp. But my point is, the A's are not the same as the Cubs. The Cubs are sitting at 33 and 38. They're only four games out of their division. So they are still playing competitive baseball. And they've won seven of their last 10 after this loss on Sunday. So the Cubs have done a lot of things right. But I think this is just a reminder is that this Orioles team's resiliency. And again, there's something with teams and chemistry and guys believing what they're doing. And right now the Orioles are believing what they're doing. And just to jump out of this Cubs series then to recap the Blue Jays series, how big of a series that win is, people forget about that. You have less division games, and now the Orioles are 5-1 and one on the season against the Toronto Blue Jays, a team that has high aspirations to be in the playoffs. So it is a great sign for this Baltimore Orioles team and also that, 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 that uh, the words aren't coming to my mouth, but the, the runs the Orioles put up in game one, Gunner's granny, 
You know, it's so awesome to see. But then the Orioles lose game two and they bounce back. And what do you do? They win another close game, win it four to two, close out that series with another series win. But this was something last year, if you looked at it with this team, Toronto gave the Orioles a lot of issues. I mean, if you remember that doubleheader in Baltimore last year to, towards the end of the season where the Blue Jays in a pivotal series, pivotal doubleheader, just took the life out of the Orioles in those games, won both of them. That was a gut punch. But the Orioles this year are making sure that their presence is felt in a lot of these games. They're, they're reminding the Blue Jays, they're reminding the rest of their division that they are here to play right now. And it's really taken a village for this all to work. And I think that's what we got to remember here is that even though I know people can get very frustrated with a lot of players, there's so many guys that are just really helping this squad. And I mean, how about Austin Hayes? Austin Hayes, people who thought might be a trade piece going into the season. The dude is hitting 320 on the season. He has been nothing short of spectacular. And really, it's so great to see because he's been dealing with injuries his career. But when he's on the field, he has shown he can he's shown flashes of what he can do. But right now, it's it's been a career year so far for Austin Hayes. And I mean, honestly, if you want to dive in deeper, he's got an over 850 OPS right now. He's got eight home runs on the season. Pretty solid. 18 doubles. He's finding ways to make an impact. And I just think that's that's awesome to see, especially when everyone thought with all the prospects that the Orioles have that what is going to be happening next. And before we get into the prospects, though, the reason why those prospects aren't up here right now is the continued brilliance of the Orioles just being able to pick up guys. O'Hearn and Aaron Hicks keep shining. I, I want to just make a note here of, of why what Ryan O'Hearn's doing is so awesome, even more so than Hicks. Because I know people could say they don't like Hicks. Aaron Hicks has still been around for a while. Like he's a bona fide big leaguer, whether you like that or not, or say that he hasn't played well in a while or in years or yada, yada, yada. Aaron Hicks has been in the big leagues since 2013. It's a long time. So that's a lot of, that's a big veteran presence. But a guy like Ryan O'Hearn, who debuted in the big leagues in, in 2018 and has been trying to find his way and hasn't really had success until really this year with this team so far, He's been one of the most inspiring spots. And I tell people this all the time. It might not work out where you want, but it's important to remember that you got to keep working and keep fighting because when the right opportunity does come up, you can make an impact. And boy, has Ryan O'Hearn made an impact in the finale, had another two hit game, two runs, improved his average to 349 he's just become a very stabilizing force on an Orioles offense that needed it to be honest and so it's just it's really cool to see this team continue to help and for everyone complaining of things with the Orioles offense today everyone in the lineup got a hit today except Josh Lester who Ryan McKenna then pinched in for or and and went to play right field but point being everyone in the lineup was impacting the game today. And that is something that you love to see from one to nine. And if you can do that consistently, which the Orioles have done for a lot of part, despite the struggles people have said they've had on offense, they're still, that, that's the reason why they come back in so many games. And I've mentioned this, this in the past, the Orioles are one of the best teams in baseball in scoring runs in the seventh to ninth innings. They're great at, at putting the pressure back on or trying to put games away. And that's a skill that is hard to have. And the Orioles do a tremendous job of that. But with the Ryan O'Hearns and the Aaron Hicks, that has stopped some prospects from coming up. And I know, I know which prospects. I watch it very closely. And those guys are Jordan Westberg and Colton Kowser, to be specific. And Jordan Westberg, I got to see in person. I spent time with him in spring training. And I know just how good he is. Believe me, seen it firsthand. I know he can play in multiple positions. I haven't seen uh, Colton Kowser play in person, but I watched the tape. I know the dude can play. 
And people are wondering, well, what do those guys have to do? Well, when you have veterans or guys that come over that have had big league experience and they're playing well, you're going to stay with those guys. It makes perfect sense, right? But when's the time coming? Because Westberg and Cows are they're big league ready. They are. There's no doubt about that. But here's something I want people to think about. And I saw that Henry Davis on the Pittsburgh Pirates just got called up. Number one overall pick for the Pirates. He is going to, the Pirates are in a little bit of a different situation. Yes, he's ready. He's, and when you're the number one overall pick, there is more uh, riding on you in those senses, right? But the other part of it is the Pirates are trying to jumpstart themselves. They're right on the cusp of teetering each way. They're 34 and 36, trying to stay in the hunt, two and a half back of the Brewers. So with that being said, they need to figure out how to jumpstart, and they think Henry Davis is ready. The Orioles, I understand the up-and-down play of Jorge Mateo. But when you call guys up like a Jordan Westberg, it's to replace but also to play every day. And you got to keep in mind, as great as those guys have played the AAA level, and believe me, they have balled out. Balled out. They've earned it. Doesn't necessarily mean that they can just replace someone up in the big leagues. And I want to give this thought then, because I think this is an important thing to, to, to put into people's minds. When the team is, is doing so well, it, and you say, well, if guys are struggling, you can just plug in a guy and the team's just going to be better. It doesn't work necessarily like that. It doesn't work that you can just plug a guy in that you think is just going to go up there and absolutely mash. He might. But also, we got to remember the team is 44 and 27 for a reason. We're filming this on Sunday night. 44 and 27. That's pretty stinking good. Like I said, third best team in all of baseball. So the team is doing a lot of things right. They're doing a ton right. And so chemistry, veteran leadership, I'm talking about guys like Adam Frazier, and people can say, well, the numbers have dropped. His presence is felt in that locker room and on that field. It is felt. Corey Mateo still impacts the game, and yes, I think you could slide in at some point, but right now as an organization, what are you going to do? He still plays good defense. He's been around in the league enough, and the team's winning a lot. And then Urias has been one of the best kind of Jack of all trades, you can put him at second, third if you need to, and he's going out there and he is giving you some really, really productive at-bats and productive usage in the field. So when we're talking about this and you're saying, well, they need help in the outfield, why is Lester there? Well, you can make the choice, but with those guys, you hope Kowser and Westberg, if they're up, they're going to play. And at the moment, with the team playing so well, do you want to shake up that many things? Again, their time's coming. Who knows? Their time might come this week. But that was a decision for the front office to have to make. And here's the thing that I wanted everyone to think about. When a team's doing so well, last year, when Adley Rutschman came up, the team was, was not where it wanted to be. And they could say, well, he made all the impact in the world. And he did, especially catching and calling games and being that backstop for the team. But offensively, he struggled to start his career. You know who also struggled to start their career? Cedric Mullins. Austin Hayes had his up and down moments. Anthony Santander. Gunnar Henderson, who has been red hot of recently, but he struggled. So my, my point being, when guys initially came up, it wasn't smooth sailing. But look at those guys now, Mullins, Santander, Hayes, Adley, Gunner. All these guys are big parts of the team, but it took time for them to get to where they are. And that's my one thing is as great as Kowser and Westberg is playing, if you're expecting them to go up there and absolutely tear it up like they do in AAA, you could be in for a disappointment. And it's not because I don't think that they're good players. I think that they are tremendous players. But the amount of adjustment that you have to make 
And then to be able to do that on the fly and the pressure and expectation of you coming up and this team is winning, that's a lot to put on young players. So people need to address that. And that's something that goes into the Orioles' minds because when you have guys like Ryan O'Hearn and Aaron Hicks who have big league experience, they've been up there and yes, they've had struggles. They've had at bats up there. They know what happens. They get it. And the fact that they're playing so well right now makes this team even that more poised. And again, that might not seem like something that's big to the outside eye, but having a group of individuals that just bring such leadership and bring such belief and it brings that chemistry together really changes. Like I can't tell you how hard it is to stay in games constantly. Like that, that's hard to do. And this Orioles team does it time and time again. So I want people to keep that in mind. Westberg and Cowser's time's coming. And I do believe it will be in Baltimore. But don't, but don't underestimate just because they're having great years that they're just all of a sudden going to ride that right up in the AAA or right up into the big leagues. It just doesn't always work that way. So keep, keep the faith, understand, and be happy with where the team's at. This is a great problem to have. And the Orioles, too, like I said, would be in a way different position in the division if the Rays just weren't doing something so absurd at home. Another little note I wanted to talk about was D.L. Hall going back to Florida to work on his own per, per professional development, getting stronger, not worrying about the the innings and going out there and pitching. It's 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 a lack of a better term. It's a unique situation. I can't say I've heard too many of this. I, I know it's been done in pro ball, but I I don't I don't know how I feel about it. I, I'm indifferent about the whole situation because hearing reports that his fastball velo is down so they wanted to get back up and just try to get him right the ultimate goal is you want dl feeling good dl's future with the team just like we've talked about with grayson got both of their upsides and their and their arms are tremendous and they and with this organization they still are viewed very highly so i want people to understand that it is just different to hear when you send a guy to florida and it never feels good either when you're in the season, they go, oh, by the way, you're going down. You're going to get up in the morning each morning. You're going to work on stuff and it's just not going to count. Essentially, stats don't count. It's a weird, it's a weird environment in that sense. But the ultimate goal is just to get the guy going and maybe that's the reset he needs. Maybe that's what he needs to feel like he can get back to being that dominant force. And, and talking about a guy, a freak athlete and, and a ridiculously good arm deal all and i got a front row seat to that so i i have the utmost confidence he's going to figure it out just a weird situation and then as there's a lot of other moves going up on the farm and people are wondering with all the movement guys going up from aberdeen to Bowie, Bowie to norfolk that maybe there's a move going to baltimore who knows but it is an exciting time. This is a great situation to have here for Baltimore. When you have guys that just are so good or the pipeline so good, this is what made the Orioles teams really good You know, earlier on, like decades ago, is that they had such a good farm system that if you couldn't crack it with the big league team, but you were dominating, you were going to get a chance somewhere else. And when you're able to, to stockpile enough guys with so much talent, it makes it just, even though every player wants to play in Baltimore, and and I've heard players talk about it, but that's the reality. It's a business. You can't control it. You can't control what you're gonna, what's going to happen. You just got to go out there and play. But if you play well enough and you continue to do what you're doing, some team is going to put you in the big leagues. That's a fact. So right now, one way or another, some of these players are going to have a chance to play on another team. That's all I got for down on the far. Oh, yeah. And by the way, how could I forget about this guy? Kobe Mayo. Kobe Mayo on a 32 on game base streak. On game, on base game streak. I knew I messed that up. Ow now. I need to do the, the anchor man. You know, he does it before, you know, unique New York. Do some of those to try to get it going. But anyway, Kobe Mayo is just on a tear. And I got to sit down with him on my own personal podcast and just talk a little bit with him on 
his perspective and how he deals with the everyday and the grind and really impressive individual and actually might have some more things with those guys coming up here in the future. So stay tuned. But Kobe Mayo really is an impressive pro, uh, prospect and his hit tool is, has insane upside, like insane big dude, big body, and he's only getting better. So just keep that in mind. That's just one of the farm guys that people probably aren't talking about enough, but in a couple of years, remember that name, Kobe Mayo. He is, he's proven that he can be the real deal. Whew. Yeah, but you know what? Why don't we move into a little bit of Rip's tips, shall we? And the Rip's tips of the week is on perspective. It's a word that gets thrown out there quite a lot. And actually, the reason why I want to bring it up is because I can be very sarcastic on Twitter, but I also feel like I try to be as realistic as possible and just try to make people understand how hard the game is. And I love people's passion, by the way. I love people's passion for the team, for the city of Baltimore. I love it. The thing I just want to talk about with perspective is understanding the bigger picture. So I wrote a tweet earlier talking about the teams and talking about how teams like the Rangers, the Astros, the might have lost the tweet, sorry, the Dodgers, the Brewers, all teams that are in the hunt, either leading the division or are one of the best teams in baseball have either lost six or seven of their last 10 games. So it just goes to show you that it's hard. And during the stretch, the Orioles have won six of their last 10. Despite everything looking bad, and even when people talked about they dropped the two series at home to, you know, b- before they went on the road, yeah, or they had the bad home stand against the Rangers, like, it happens. But then you weather the storm, you come back, you win five or six at home, then you go on the road. And so what? You avoided getting swept. And I want people to give a little bit of perspective. Going into today's the game, the Orioles were in the top 10 in runs per game. And the bullpen, the numbers are not going to reflect it ERA-wise. Sorry, ERA is not going to be reflected. But the team is in the top 15, where personally I feel that they have been one of the best teams as far as pitching wise this season, especially after the month of April. And then bullpen wise, you have the best one, two punch in the eighth and ninth inning in all of baseball, Cano and Batista best two to go up against, you know, I would put them up against any setup and closer role, role guys in all of baseball. And then the Orioles are in the top three in close game win percentage. So that means in games in games less than three runs or less, they are winning at a clip of like 66%, 65%. So it's just something. And you're hearing about that they're one of the top teams in runs scored between the seventh and ninth inning. They are near the top at comeback wins in all of baseball. So when things are going wrong here, I want to just give perspective. This team, despite all these things, are 17 games over 500. But the perspective I want to show to people, and I know people are saying the goal is to win the division. Well, guess what? The the 2014 team that won the AL East, this Orioles team's on pace to win more games than that team. That's the reality. And so that's a crazy thing to think of, right? But here's the thing. It really doesn't matter if you win the division. The division can get you a bye. But the biggest thing is to be in the dance, to be in the playoffs, because then what truly matters is, are you playing your best ball at the right moment? Because last year, you can go back and look, the Phillies snuck in. They got hot and went to the World Series. The Padres were a wild card team. They went and beat an 100 win Mets team. Knocked them out of the playoffs, and, and then they go and beat the Dodgers and get to the NLCS against the red hot Phillies. So my my point, you just got to get in. You have to get in. And if you get in, anything can happen. So as I want the Orioles to win the division, but the perspective of you just have to weather the storm for as long as you go. And, and the Orioles are one of two teams right now in all of baseball, or at least when I made this tweet, 
a day or two ago that they had, there were at least seven games and now it's eight. Now there's still one or two teams that have a record of eight games or better over 500 on the road and at home. The only other team is the Atlanta Braves who are 24 and 15 at home and 22 and 11 on the road. The Orioles splits for people that want to know the Orioles are 22 and 13 at home and 22 and 14 on the road. That is pretty darn good. And it's consistent. It's efficient. So that's my thing. When things get go wrong, try to take a step back and look at perspective because our emotions will drive us insane. They can help us in so many ways, but they can push us down a path where it just really can be frustrating. So if we can always take a step back, always usually helps. Believe me, I'm trying to do that more now that I'm done. And as a player, that was really hard for me to do. So I'm trying to in life to do that as best I can because I feel myself is in more control. That's what I'm trying to do. Just letting people know, FYI. Uh, Yeah. So that is it for the rips tip of the week. And now let's move into the, the biggest series of the season so far. And no, it's not the Seattle Mariners series, but even though that will be a good one in Baltimore, it'll start the Tampa Bay Rays. The Orioles are traveling to Tampa Bay for a huge, huge set. And it's a little bit weird. It's only for, you know, <laughs> we got the off day Monday and they're only playing two games against the Rays, but it's a series where you can tell a little bit more about where your team's at. Now, the Orioles won that series at home against the Rays, took two or three. Now you have a chance to go to the place where it is the hardest to win, take on the best team in baseball, and try to inch just a hair closer. And at worst, if you can split this two-game set, you walk out of there still five games back. You sweep it, hey, now, things are different. You get swept, e you know. Looks a little bit worse, but it's still so early in the season, but it's just a great test. And really, it should be a great series. The Rays do so many things well, and I know people hated the comparison. People hated the comparison of the Orioles trying to be the Rays. Oh, I'd love to be the Rays. That team, that team mashes. That team pitches. They, that team knows how to play. They've been one of the best organizations over the last 10 years. I know paying guys is one thing, and every player deserves to get paid. Shout out the players, want them to get paid. The biggest thing is this Tampa Bay team and the Orioles are, are doing that this year. Whoever plays on that Tampa team, whatever the circumstances, they are ready to go. That team doesn't make excuses. Whoever's out there goes up, shows up, and makes plays for that team. That's why they're so good. So what do I expect from this series? Well, I expect it to be a tough one. I expect I'd be shocked the Orioles going to Tampa and take both just because of how good the Rays are. But like I said, I would not be surprised if they do. But it's a hard expectation to think. But if you're a player and you believe in this team and you're a fan, you believe in this team, absolutely. This is something that you can believe in. And the Orioles are doing a lot of great things. And it helps that you're so good on the road. But it's a battle of great team on the road versus the best team at home. Gosh, it is just crazy to think looking at this AL East right now. Tampa Bay Rays, 51 and 24. O's 44 and 27. The Orioles have a five and a half game lead on the third place team, the New York Yankees. And the Blue Jays are sitting. 11 games back of the Rays in first, six back from the Orioles and the Red Sox, who are over 500 again, 12 and a half back of the Rays, seven and a half back of the O's. Just think about that. The O's have built up such a cushion against their second place foes. And quite frankly, right now, I mean, the best teams that we're watching in, in the American League, it's the Rays, it's the Rangers. And right now, the Angels and Astros kind of round it out. But this O's team, this is a great chance this next week to really, and honestly, actually, arguably, this week is a really big one for them because the team that they're playing the Seattle Mariners in the next series, now that team 
has some aspirations. I actually thought they were a World Series contender, and now they are at 500. And so they're creeping their way back, and they got some talented players themselves on their team, and they do a lot of good things well. And by the way, they do have Julio Rodriguez. If you haven't watched him play, whoo, he is a stud. Really is done a lot of great things for this team. And he's a guy that needs to be watched. So what would I hope for this week? Well, I think if the Orioles can come out of Tampa, split in that series, I think that's a win. If you go and win the series, well, you better watch out for this team because that means they are right back in and they're still in it, but they'd be three games back. But that's just it's a lot to expect right now. And then the Seattle series just continuing to grind because these are good teams. These are professionals. These are guys going out there and continuing to put their best foot forward. And the Orioles are one of those teams and they're not surprising anyone now. I think that what we need to understand is this Orioles team is developing a reputation for just not going away. And if they can continue to do that, they can compete with anybody. So my goal in the week, the Orioles play 500 ball. That's a win for me. You do anything better than that. It's a plus. It's a long series, 71 games down, 91 to go. But boy, has it been a fun start to the season so far for these Orioles. That's kind of all I got right now. And quite frankly, it just isn't the same without my guy Rocco. So look forward to having him back on so we can keep ripping and rocking. Before I get out of here, check out, download, like, review. See, I'm even messing up how to do this. Like, review, subscribe to the Rip and Rock podcast. You can get it on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, really wherever you can get your podcast. Drops every Monday. And like we've always said, please review and let us know how we're doing. If you don't like what we're doing, we want to hear it. And if you love what we're doing, we want to keep doing it. This podcast is for all of you listeners out there. This is to make it a better experience for you because we all care about this team and Birdland. And this is something that we want to keep making it a better experience for you. So that's all I got for this episode. I will see you next week for a new episode of Rip and Rock. But until then, you guys have a great week.